let's begin then. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. I'm Roberto again, and this is the day two of, of the uh, and, uh, and this is day two of Crypto, of Crypto Thursday. So well, uh, last time I last time I could not uh, introduce myself correctly. So yeah, uh, my, my his, this is who I am. Uh, I'm Roberto Subieta, I'm a consensus certified Ethereum developer, and I have already four years of experience in smart contracts and construction and development. And I'm from Panama City, Republic of Panama. That's my website. In uh, I've already worked two years at Admios as well, uh, at, at, at Admios. So, yeah, I've been working in Admios, I've been working uh, backend, and I've been working also now on smart contracts and blockchain development uh, lately. So, uh, what is today's objective? Uh, we are going to write a small contract, we are going to deploy to Ethereum, and then build a smart React application to interact with it. That's today's objective. It's going to be more uh, practical how uh, how I how I do this every day. Um, okay. And first off, I uh, I want to introduce the tools that we're going to use. Uh, the language, the contracts are uh, in, in Ethereum. We're going to be using the Ethereum network and Ethereum testnet. So we're going uh, smart contracts for Ethereum are written in Solidity. That's the language that we are going to write uh, use. Uh, for the toolkit, uh, we are going to use Hardhat. Uh, I've been uh, I've, I've been uh, recommending Truffle, but lately I've been using Hardhat uh, in with the current with our current client and. It and hard has been and hard hat has been very useful. Uh, for, for the web wallet, we are going to be using a MetaMask, and for the front end, we are going to build a small front end with uh, Next.js plus React.js plus TypeScript. Uh, we are going to be using Infura as our node, and we are going to be using the Ethereum testnet of Rinkeby. So, well, let's begin. Uh, a small introduction of the tools. Uh, this is Ethereum. This is the network we are going to be building for. This is the net, uh, Ethereum net uh, Ethereum network. Uh, in order to develop smart contracts for Ethereum, uh, there are two large uh, there are two large uh, toolkits that are uh, that are popular right now. This is the one that has been recommended to the people in the, uh, the to us in Admios, the Truffle. Uh, this is the one. This is the most popular one, the one that's most used for everyone. But uh, well, yeah. But my client currently has been using Hardhat, so we are going to be using Hardhat today because uh, I, I'm warmer with this, and I think I can work a little faster today. Uh, uh, for the wallet, we're going to be using MetaMask. Uh, as you can see, this is a, a, a we're going to be using the uh, browser extension version of MetaMask. This is the browser we're going to be using as a client, and MetaMask is already configured here. Uh, yeah. Uh, Next.js will be the front end. Uh, this is just a, a, Re a React framework that uses TypeScript and First, and finally, uh, we're going to be using Infura. Infura, it's, uh, uh, they essentially run nodes for you. They have, a, they have a, a series of nodes. You can connect to those nodes, and then you can query tr uh, the Ethereum network through those nodes instead of running your own node. That way, it makes development feel more like, a, like a AWS and, 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 running and cloud development. So um, the first thing I did before this presentation uh, is that uh, is this. You might have noticed that I have here a lot of ether. Before you say before you say I'm rich, uh, that's actually uh, Rinkeby. This is in Rinkeby test network because in the main net, I actually this account has nothing. <laughs> what happens here is that in the in the testnet network which are the networks that are all used for con for testing and for people to learn to use contracts and for testing the contract before deploying it to the mainnet uh, you can uh, use faucets to get a lot of uh, free ether that you can that then you uh, you can get free ether via a faucet uh, for example uh, This one. You just I just have to I you I just have to tweet an, uh, the MI address and uh, and this faucet will send that address uh, 
it is a lot of iterations. In this case, 18.18 .18 iter every three, day, every three days. That's but again, this is only in the Rinkibyte test network. In the main network, it uh, uh, in the main network it, it does not work. So um, let's begin then. Uh, the first thing we are going to do is to initialize the toolkit. Sorry, I wrote it correctly. Typo. Okay, I'm just going to copy a few files from my from here. Well, uh, I'm. This is just the same thing, the, the, the same thing you saw before. Just uh, this is the, uh, more. This is the same uh, code you saw before. Just uh, written for, written for, uh, just written for, uh, written in TypeScript. And then I'm just going to, well, uh, process. Mm. Well, and and this thing also is not working now right now. Okay. Hmm. That's the reason why it's not working. That's the reason why it's not been detected. Uh, okay. Okay. Um, we are going to write a small contract. It's not going to be. Uh, it's not going to be terribly complicated. Oh, better yet, I just copy it. I I already wrote a small a small version of that of this of this contract, so I just have to copy it and remove all the parts that we are not going to use. And we are not going to use this. We are not going to use this. We are not going to use this. We are not going to use this, and we are not going to use this. Congratulations! We this is small. This is a very small, uh, a very small smart contract. It, it is already written in Solidity, and all this contract does is that whenever is that anybody can call, can call it with a new message, and then th that message th that message will be saved. Anybody else then can uh, can retrieve the current message and can change it. Uh, this will be this thing will be deployed into this, this, this it will be eventually deployed into Rinkby. So you can just test that it works.
Well, yeah. What happened here is that is that I started with a with a completely clean project instead of uh, starting with the instead of starting with the uh, predefined default, uh, which which already included a lot of uh, all of these installs. So, um, yeah, I just lost a little time with that, but it's not com it's not terribly complicated uh, to install it again. Okay, hardhead. Ha Okay, this is the contract, and Hardhat has just compiled it. Uh, what exactly means that part of compilation? If you see here on the contracts, uh, this is the this is the output of the, of that compilation. Uh, it's just a small it's a small JSON at this point, which includes two important parts. First, first of all, it, this is the bytecode. This uh, this is the entire program uh, written in binary and this is what is uploaded to the blockchain itself. Uh, this, when run in the Ethereum virtual, uh, in, it's in the EVM Ethereum big, Ethereum virtual machine, uh, executes uh, this code. This is the binary version of this code. Also, another important part is this: the ABI. The ABI is the um, is the represent is are all the methods all the all the ways I can interact with this uh, with this contract uh, and JavaScript libraries use this use this array in order to um, in order to create the uh, the functions and the and the methods that I'm going to be using to query this application. So this these are the two main parts. The, of the entire compilation. So if I wanted for to deploy this, then I will create a small script. Yeah, I'm going to copy it from the script I had before. Okay, this is a small deployment script. This is uh, more or less the way I interact with this con with, with those contracts. Um, uh, right now, Hardhat is giving me this option that get contract factory. This is just uh, a, a Hardhat takes this JSON and builds this this object, and with this object, I just um, deploy it to the network, and then I can interact with it directly via this via this object. Um, you'll see more clearly right now. Um, so all I, uh, right now, all I have to do is, is execute that. That that means that the script is working. But uh, just a uh, just. Just a small detail here. Um, in I'm not running this via uh, to the Rinkeby network. I'm running this locally. Uh, Hardhat first. Uh, Hardhat and Truffle at that point. Uh, at this point, are only deploying into a, a D2 an emulated uh, blockchain inside memory. So the moment the script finishes, the contract disappears and it never leaves my it never leaves my computer. So, but what I really want is to deploy to a real network, to the Rinkeby network. Uh, so um, I'm going to do some. I'm going to. Uh, I'm going. Uh, first of all, I'm going to copy my private key. The my, my private key into this uh, into this file. Uh, it's normally not very complicated because it's just a string. But since I am live casting this, I'm. I pr I'm going to have to copy it and copy it so that you can so that you do not see it. So let's. This 
there. Private, the private key is just a name, is, is this, is this file here. It's just a name file with, uh, with the string that of, of the private key. And, he, and, and with that, I can complete, I can do the rest of the script. Okay, I can explain this a little bit further. Um, right now, hard hat, uh, we, when I ask to connect to the Rinke by net, uh, I can select any uh, different, many different kinds of networks for uh, to con uh, for hard hat to uh, connect to. In this case, I want to connect to Rinke by via info via the Infura node. I could make my own node uh, that uh, essentially my own my own Ethereum server, and that server uh, reads a, is a, is a, is a can be an entire peer in the network. As in, it read, takes all it has all the state of the entire global state of net of Ethereum, as well, and, con and keeps mining. Or uh, but that's actually a lot more complicated. It's very complicated, and especially for a small test like this. So all I'm doing, well, all, I'm, all all I will do here is to uh, use an already existing node, which 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 is the service Infura provides. They are they run the node, so you can read from Infura instead of building your own node. It will it will it will work essentially as a REST API. And I'm going to connect using my private key. Uh, which is in the in this file here. So, with with that, let's deploy this. Let's deploy the contract. This is the change that I'm going. I'm asking Harhead to deploy to the Rinkeby network. It will take a while because this is a live network, so it will take a few sec. It will it can take a it can take a little while. Oh, it was fast. Okay, first of all, you notice probably you have noticed that this contract, uh, this con this con this F, uh, I lost the uh, there. Do you see the it? Do you see the eater go down? That's because I was charged by the Rinkaby network in Ether to deploy that contract. The uh, uh, MetaMask here is reading directly from the Rinkaby test network. Not, it's not reading from my computer directly. So, and also I have this, which is the new contract address. The, you can you can do this also in your computers, but if you go to Etherscan. In Rinkeby, the Rinkeby for the Etherscan. This is this uh, Etherscan is the is is a, a, a directory for all the transactions in 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 the Ethereum network. And in this case, I am running the the version for Rink for the Rinkeby test network. If I take that address that was copied here, which is uh, which is this at the contract's address, look what happens. It says that a contract was deployed here by this by the, by this person, which it, which is actually me. This is this is the address that would deploy the contract, and look that this is this, this exact same address because I took this private key, and it's the one that I added here in the env. Sorry. Now this contract is public. Any one of you can go to this URL right here. I'm going to copy this URL so that you can see it. Uh, there. Now this contract is public, and any one of you can see it. I can see it into can see it uh, and interact with it. The thing is, uh, right now the only way to interact with it is uh, right now. Uh, you have to build an, an app, a, a script or something to interact with it. There's no, um, there's no uh, interface. There's no graphic interface. So we are going to have to do a new script to interact with this contract. First, first let's do some night. Let, let's do some magic in first. Uh, let me remember how. 
how that was done. Ethereum waffle. Mm. Okay. Okay, this bug I did not expect that. Um, let's try only with hard hat. Yeah, that was it. Probably, probably some sort of race condition. Mm. Now I configure that here. And npx hard hat clean. And let's compile again and see what happens. Uh, type chain is a special toolkit. It's a special toolkit for TypeScript that remember when I told you about this is the the, the the artifacts in the contract uh, here that they, that you have the ABI. This ABI is the representation of all the methods that the contract has, but it's in a neutral uh, language, in a language that uh, that any computer can understand. What I do, what I, uh, what uh, TypeChain has done here is that translates that into TypeScript. So now look that I have my the, the method that I that I wrote and in and there and it's in. The, the, me the method that I wrote in TypeScript and everything typed with all the correct typings. Just one small change. The that you have to add this uh, the, the the TypeScript configuration, and with that I can create a script. And, and, and with that I can I can run this. Uh, and with that I have all the typings that I need. Uh, for the contract for the contract object to have all the methods I am um, I was already do, uh, using here so Okay. In order to use the type chain, I just have to do this. I just have to. There. Now I have the TypeScript for the contract. I can with that. Let's say I want to know. Uh, let I want to write a message. So I can. The, 
you might see you might see uh, this is the method this method is actually is this one is the one that's been called by the uh, from the contract what uh, what this will do is that it will take the it will take this parameter and this method name uh, transform it into the format that uh, infura uh, understands and uh, and the infura will transform that into the format ethereum understands and then it will write into and and it will write into the contract whatever uh, this is small message so It takes a while because it's a live network. Well, it seems like I forgot to uh, output the text. <laughs> yeah. Wait. Okay, this one will first read the message that's already stored there. Then will, it will change to a new message. And then with that message, I will take, uh, it, it, will try, it will try to read it again from the contract and read it and, and output it into the console. So let's try again. Uh, the message method is created by this by this para by this variable by, by this variable since the variable is public and anyone can read it uh, the uh, the compiler automatically creates method here that 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 allows people to read uh, that allows other uh, uh, that allows uh, clients to read it hmm Yeah, that was a mistake for me. I was deploying the contract instead of connecting it to an existing one. Yeah, um, remember that this contract. Remember, this is the contract that we deployed originally in into the into the uh, Rinkeby. So all I'm doing is that I'm I'm asking the contract factory to get me a contract that's it, it get me the contract at this address. Um, what I was doing in the previous script was I was deploying it again. So yeah, sorry about that. Let's try a third time.
Ok. Well, there's the there's the interaction. Uh, for uh, I don't I well I'm still working on how and why on what happened here, but um, but you can now see that in Etherscan that the contract has already been um, that I already did a, a execute that change message method into the in the contract. So yes, there should be. Uh, there should have been. Uh, uh, I sh they should have read that my my transaction, but it didn't. So let's let's try let's try one last time before. Let's try one last time. Probably is the concatenation. It's wrong. And I remember. Uh, I remember what happened. Uh, since the mess, uh, remember the finality takes a while. So uh, what's happening here is that it is reading the message in the in the current block, but uh, the new transaction has not been completed yet. So it must wait a little longer. Uh, what happened? Uh, this change message all it's doing is posting to the node that we I want to change the message, but uh, and and the, and the node returns me that okay I started to change it, but the transaction itself is still being transacted on it's it's, it's still being waited and uh, you're still wait we're still waiting to add it to a block uh, so that's what this second wait does this wait until it's already in a block and then return me the answer and then return me the new version Yes. Now, now you see that the that we have the correct now that we have the expected output. Okay. Uh, yes, but this function itself uh, it's not pretty interesting. Uh, this contract itself right now is not doing a lot. Uh, let's let's add a, a, a uh, let's add some interesting functionalities for it to be more uh, to for it to be more uh, something that we could use every every day. First of all. A constructor uh, let's, uh, I'm going I'm just going to copy the code I have uh, I, I had already uh, I, ha I had already done for this okay several uh, okay uh, several things happen here uh, first of all the change mess uh, we are make we are now adding as a message at the beginning so that when you read this for the first time you are going to have uh, a default message something like no message set yet and 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 that message is just um, and that message is just uh, uh, this thing works exactly the same way I also ask for it to to emit this, this is an event. Uh, one of the interesting parts in it's in the in uh, in the blockchain development is you can is since everybody is con uh, since this is a decentralized network, anybody can connect to any node and listen to any contract and wait until that contract uh, some until that contract something changes. So that, for example, instead of uh, querying every 15 seconds, has the message changed? I can 
ask that whenever I change a message, I emit this event. Who changed it and which is the message, the new message that was emitted. So uh, this this is useful for one because these two events uh, are a log are essentially like database logs. This is a history of all the changes that the message has gone through all through all time, and also who changed it. This way you can do some sort of uh, uh, of, uh, of ACL. You can know who changed it, who changed those logs. So uh, in order for it to be understood, to understood better, let's do this. Let's compile this. Hmm. Okay. Well, now with that, let's comp let's uh, deploy this new version of the contract, and that will change the address because the contract is the now the contract is completely different. Mm -hmm. What happened now? Oh yeah, remember that I had a default. A default uh, message. Now, okay, this will be the new contract address. This will be the final one. And let's look that for that in here in Etherscan. Well, it will take a little while. Meanwhile, uh, I take that address and in the other two scripts here in the listener, I just add this. And in the messaging, I add this. Okay, uh, just, okay, here what's happening in the messaging. Uh, you, we are, uh, he, if you see here the contract, I have this event, the message changed event. Whenever a message is changed, it's, the, 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 the event is submitted. So all I'm doing here is that each time the event is submitted, the, it will output who emitted it and what that person says. 
it, it this will this will con this will run continuously. So I'll need a, a new a, a, a new terminal for this. It's online, and the messaging is here. Is the same? Yes. Now let's try this. See what happens. This is messaging. This. can see that the second script which is completely independent and is also connected to uh, to the Ethereum network is this could be any in any part of the world uh, this person has just received the message that uh, that my first, that the messaging script sent the, this uh, this thing is this this is amazing in my opinion because anybody can connect to the, any node and listen to any event that any contract is emitting. It just needs the ABI, and the ABIs are normally open source. Even if you do not have the ABI, you can uh, you can decompile it yourself here. And look that even Etherscan at this point is already is already emitting those uh, events for you. So here's the history of all the of the all the events that have been here's the entire history of the contract, all the events that have that, that have happened. So anybody can as long as you know the address and you have the ABI, you can connect to any contract and listen to any event that the contract has done. Uh, I th well, uh, I'm running out of time. So, what the second thing I wanted to show here is is as a, a very rude, uh, this very rudimentary uh, ACL. When you create a new contract, I'm I am adding the original contracts creator as the owner. This is done here by the sender, and and there's a sec a new method here that automatically pauses the contract. So if anybody tries it, this is just a boolean. The post is a boolean. So uh, if the contract, I, I, only the send, only the owner can call this method, the switch post. If anybody that's not the owner tries to call this method, then the the contract is then it will be reverted. The, nothing will happen and and everything will be fine. But if the owner calls this because only owner can call this method, uh, this is the require for it, then the contract will be paused. And if it's paused, then, uh, then the change message will uh, stop working. The only way for a uh, change message to return working is that the owner again on pauses. And, and also I made a small event here that whenever uh, the owner pause, pauses the, whenever the owner pauses the contract, uh, whenever the owner posts the contract, uh, an event is emitted, so that again anybody can uh, can see the logs that who uh, posted and why. Well, um, I'm going to do one last thing before uh, before uh, finishing up today. So let's do a front end, a small web a small web application for this. Uh, let's. I I forgot what was the command.
Okay, um, I created a small front end here with uh, React.js and, and Next.js. And here is the pages. Um, okay, let's remove APIs, um, move to trash, and index. Uh, index, uh, let's change it completely into this. Okay. Um, this okay. I cheated here a little because this, I had already made this. Um, I had already made this component, this uh, this uh, web application, and also um, um, and well, it's not it's not a uh, pretty code. Uh, it's just something that works when when you start it. So please don't uh, criticize it too hard. I, so, uh, but uh, just I'm going to uh, just uh, I'm just going to tell you uh, what happens here quickly. Um, when when you start here, when you start the, for for the first time this um, the this con the, this application, then it will try to connect to this window dot Ethereum. Uh, this is actually the, this is actually the interface to MetaMask. This tries to connect to MetaMask. And with that, it gives you a new. Uh, it, and that, and with that, it tries to get me the ad, the account's address and the account's balance. With that, uh, then I try to connect to the contract. Uh, remember that the, there's a contract address here. Uh, well, yeah, I have to change it to the to the uh, correct address. Yes, this is the contract. This is will, this will be the, this is the contract address. This is the ABI. Uh, remember that the ABI is just this artifact here. But uh, the uh, remember that the ABI is this artifact here. That's just the uh, that's just the description of all the methods that the my contract is uh, my, that my contract understands. That uh, in most cases that's deployed to npm so that so that a applications can read it, but I have no time here, so I'm just reading it directly. And then when when it tries to connect to the contract, and then when the and then uh, when the contract when the first time I connected to the contract, I try to get the current message and set starting message. Here the the rest the rest of them are the the rest of them are just. Um, is is just trying to send the is just uh, in in an interface with the contract. So Local host three thousand. Okay, this is the contract. I'm going again. Uh, well, uh, MetaMask already. Uh, I had already given permission for uh, for local host three thousand, so it didn't. The window, the small window, did not appear. But. Um, but it says here MetaMask is telling me that is that I'm connected to localhost 3000 and and look and MetaMask already gave my pub, my public key and here's my balance. A balance is give uh, it's the same number. It's just uh, this one is given in way, which is uh, uh, 10 to the 18. Uh, this is 10 to the 18, uh, but it's the same number. And and uh, and you might remember that this is exactly the same message I get I got from here. 
I am reading this from I repeat I'm reading this from the blockchain itself. I'm not reading it from local from any local state. And also I'm re I'm, I, I have this. This is this is the entire uh this are the entire log history for this for this is the entire log history for this contract. This are uh, each time that each message was sent that a new message was sent. So I can do this uh Let's try to send a new message. Oh, something new happened here. This, okay, what happened here? Uh, for me to write to a, trans a transaction to a contract, I have to sign the con I have to sign that information. I have to sign it with my private key. Uh, MetaMask is the one right now storing my private key, and it's giving giving me the information of why, how much will it cost to execute that, and how much Ethereum is sending to the to this contract in particular. Uh, gas, uh, well, I'll. I'll I'm just going to use uh, the recommended for gas. I'm just going to use the uh, what a uh, MetaMask recommends. But normally you can get your uh, ga uh, your gas here in either gas station and just take what what you want. How fast you want your transaction to happen? I'm going to do 25 because uh, I have a lot of ether, so I don't care. This is a how much you're paying to do the transaction because. Besides doing the besides the cost of the because besides the cost of executing the function, you can also multiply that that, that cost for, uh, in order for your transaction to come first. Uh, miners uh, can choose which transactions they add to the block. So normally, what they do is they add the transactions that uh, give them more money. So if the so if you offer more money. For your transaction, miners will will likely will uh, are incentivized to get, uh, take your transaction first. That's the reason why for if uh, at some points the Ethereum net network is too congested, uh, gas prices go like this, which is right now very expensive. This 25, but uh, a few days ago it was in four. So that's this works as a multiplier. So. Uh, to, for example, is this is the total that will cost me for about 25, which is one that I will use here. Is the, this is the total. Uh, so yeah, for this kind of transactions, to uh, use a, use a small uh, uh, try to try to do them in uh, when the gas is when the gas is cheap. Also, uh, this gas has been this is this a window is done by MetaMask because MetaMask remember has my private key and my, my MetaMask is storing my private keys in a way in a secure way so I do not have to copy and paste it everywhere like like a password will do this is uh, similar to uh, one uh, last pass or one pass or yeah I can just verify that the transaction does what I want and conf uh, add, add uh, some gas price and confirm and now this and now uh, MetaMask has signed my transaction. Has signed my transaction, and it's and that transaction is sent via Infura to the e to the Rinkeby Ethereum network. And here it looks like that my transaction has been done because I paid a lot of uh, a lot of gas for it. Here is the result from console. And remember that the message will be test from front end. So if I uh, restart it, here's the message. Here is the uh, here are all the logs from here are all the logs that I have read from uh, from from the contract itself. Uh, these are all the logs, all the history logs. And if you see here, I left my uh, listener working and my listener is read again that this that this address sent um, send me this message. Well, uh, that guess that, that has been the uh, quite a quick demonstration of how uh, smart contracts work and everything. Uh, this is just for uh, this is again this is a very small demonstration. Uh, bigger smart contracts have bigger 
uh, it take a lot a lot more of time to implement and work around them and man, how you have to do unit testing and all of that stuff but uh, this has been a small uh, hello world for you to for you to understand for you to look how it works Uh, next, well, next week, my plan for next week will be to do to create a cryptocurrency, uh, create a small uh, ERC20 token that could, that can work in the uh, also in the Ethereum network and and use that to uh, and and I'm going to try that to make that that in order to create a new to in order to send a message you have to pay one of that token so that integrate that token with this contract. Uh, that will, but that will be for next week. Uh, thank you, everyone, uh, and I'm open for questions. Well, uh, the first question comes from Michael. Uh, having that having that transactions can be expensive in this network out of DeFi. What other real use cases can be implemented with Ethereum blockchain? Well, uh, he's got a point. Right now, right now, Ethereum ha is a victim of its own success in that it's very expensive for transactions to work. Uh, at 20 gas, we're talking about five, six dollars per transaction, which is a lot of money. And this, and this happens as well because of, um, and this happens as well to transactions between accounts. So. Uh, Right now, uh, the alternatives are number one: uh, you can wait for the uh, for the uh, network upgrade that will come in the next. Uh, they are rushing; the, they are working fast for the new upgrade that will, in theory, uh, reduce the price for all transactions. Or you can do a, what's called a layer two protocol, which is seems like it's uh, it's the new it's, it's the new fashion right now because uh, uh, transactions have been expensive for so long in mainnet that some people are doing uh, a network on top of Ethereum and and that network with the same security uh, credentials from the real uh, from Ethereum network um, you, uh, you 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 transfer on this on the on the, on the second network. Uh, you transfer on the second network instead of the first one, and here is a lot uh, cheaper and faster. And then when you have to exit this, uh, the second network, uh, you can uh, you can take your tokens back to the mainnet. So uh, again, it's a it's a, decent, it's, it's a decentral are decentralized networks on top of Ethereum. Uh, that's uh, called the Layer Two protocol, and that's uh, an area that's uh, right now in open research. But I've seen, for example, that XDAI has uh, fractions of cent per uh, per transaction uh, between accounts, and uh, you can also use contracts with them. Uh, but yes, right now uh, transactions are expensive in mainnet, so you have to start using other protocols, uh, Optimism or XDAI or uh, Matic uh, Polygon network. Um, or you can do what Michael suggested and use a, a network that does not include gas, for example, a hyperledger, which which does not implement gas by itself. So uh, transactions are not are, are not costly are not costed there. But uh, uh, that's a private network. You have to build your own network. Okay, uh, another question: uh, What's the main difference between hard hat and truffle? uh well truffle it's more integrated with uh, with the with all of uh, uh how was it called uh, with the entire toolkit of the uh, of the people of that uh, of that company so they are integrated with uh, ganache they're integrated with drizzle they are integrated with truffle teams so this is a huge toolkit with a lot of uh, moving parts that makes a lot of things easy but sometimes it's a little bit too fat. Uh, Hardhead, on the other hand, is a bit is, is more minimalistic and types first, and and you have to implement a lot of stuff yourself. For example, I had to write the deploy script, uh, but Truffle already has its own version of the deploy script by default, so you have you don't have to implement it from zero. Um, more questions. Uh, 
David Núñez, do you need a database to save the smart contract address? Um, no, actually you can just publish it. So uh, for a, for I can I can do this for example. Um, no, they. Uh, they nor they normally uh, they normally publish those the they, their address uh, they, they they publish their addresses directly under on the under on the, on the readme and stuff so uh, the contracts um you, whenever you deploy a new version of the contract you do have to change the address but uh, uh, most but all projects have a, uh, are you know, they just have to tell you uh, where the address is and 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 the code they have will work. Uh, did that answer your question, uh, David? Yes. Um, anyone else? Uh, any other questions? Okay, um, well, uh, if there are no further questions, then just one thing. Um, next week, uh, I'm going to try to uh, make a little bit more interactive uh, demo for everybody. So uh, try to have uh, MetaMask uh, configured. Uh, remember MetaMask? This It's in this website. It, it works with Firefox. It works with Chrome. And it works with your cell phone. Um, just need, uh, I just need a MetaMask wor a working for a, a, and if it works I can and if it's working on your computer you can interact with me on the next uh, on uh, next week on the next version of this uh, workshop Um, okay then. Uh, well, that is since uh, I think uh, the, since I think this so it is it's over. Um, um, well, uh, that was it. So goodbye, people. Thank you for thanks for staying here, and I'm I'm closing off the presentation right now. Good goodbye, people. Goodbye. <laughs>